Like I said, my name is Petey. Uh, I'm also from the Bronx. Uh, uh, so that's a disclaimer I like to tell people before I start going, just so you know the window I'm looking out of. Uh, I like to consider myself a bodega kid, uh, trying to make it in the supermarket world, you know what I mean? Uh, we don't have all the amenities that we're used to, or like that you're used to, depending on who you are, like if you have express lanes, we don't have express in the hood. We don't have self-checkout in the hood, you know what I mean? And I've always wanted more than what I had, so that was kind of... Uh, what steered me in the directions or the decisions that I've made in life. Um, I started I started doing crime as a kid, probably like, I would say about eight years, seven or eight years old. And it started off small, like I was into your story as well, and that was pretty cool, because I'm like, you, you hear these things. So like, when I was about eight years old, I wanted a cap gun, you know, and this was like the good, you know, you had the bullshit cap guns, but this was like a die-cast metal cap gun. Like, I never saw anything like it. It was heavy. I was like, oh, this is what I want. It was like, I think, eight bucks, but it was a lot of money. I couldn't afford it. Uh, so I had this plan. My cousin who lived in Governor Houses over on Washington Avenue, he was in town for the, uh, for the week. It was like, what, like during the summer. And um, so I had this plan. I'm like, hey, we're going to go in the store. We're going to steal this cap gun. You're gonna, I'm gonna distract the uh, guy behind the counter and I'm gonna hold this bag behind my back. And while I talk to him, you put the, the gun in the bag and he won't, and this is like an eight year old kid. I'm like a mastermind. I'm like, I'm gonna put, you put the gun in the bag, they, they won't know anything, you know what I mean? So he does it, as soon as he does it, the dude in the, in the convenience store is like, hey, what are you doing? And I just like fucking jab, I take for the door, I'm out. Boom, my cousin, he's younger than me. He's sitting there, he's like, he doesn't know what to do. And he's a cute little kid, so they just kind of let him go. And I'm fucking running up the block, running up the block. I get home, and uh, now we're having fun. You know, we got the caps, we got the cap gun. We're in the, we're in the back, back of the apartment building, and we're shooting this cap gun. And my sister comes home from, like, summer camp or something. And I was such a dumb criminal. Like, I would think, you know what I mean? I'm like, I'm going to do crime because you don't need to be that smart. And until this day, I was like, oh, maybe you kind of do... Because I stole from the store that we went to every fucking day. You know what I mean? Like, we get candies there every day. So my sister's coming home, and she stops at the convenience store. You know, she's like, they ask her, hey, you you, you have a brother, right? The little guy, the nice young guy. She's like, yeah. He's like, he stole a cap gun from us today. So now my sister gets home, and me and my, my cousin, we don't, like, we're just oblivious to anything outside of having fun at the, that moment, right? So my sister gets home, we're in the backyard playing with the cap gun. She's like, hey, where'd you get that from? I'm like, oh, we, uh, we found it. She's like, no, you did. You stole it from the, the name of the place was Sunset. You stole it from Sunset. And uh, so my sister, I guess, calls, she calls my mom at work and tells her what happened. And my mom's pissed off. And she's like, she's going to kick my ass when she gets home. And uh, she told my sister to take us back to the store. So my sister, like, grabs us, takes us back to the store. We're embarrassed. We've got to give the gun back and all the stuff and say sorry. All that stuff. Mom comes home. Uh, and she beats me. She <laughs> proceeds to beat me and my cousin. And then after that, um, my mom took us back to his mom's, so to my aunt's house in uh, the projects. And she beat us more. <laughs> and uh, you know you would think that would kind of change someone's life but it didn't because that only elevated me to the next level of crime and after that like so that was the first thing I was, I was like stealing I was just a petty theft you know and then the next thing I did was burglary this is like I was, I was about eight years old so then I go to burglary a burglary burglary around maybe like 12 or 13 you know what I mean we lived in this three family apartment in the Bronx Three family house, should I say, in the Bronx. And uh, me and my cousin, another cousin at the time, different cousin, we get this bright idea. There's a door that goes into the basement of the building where the landlord's son lives. And the, for some reason, the hinges were reversed, so they were on the outside of the door. So we take the hinges off the door. We go in this guy's apartment. This guy's like a grown-ass man. We're fucking little kids, you know? So we go down this guy's place find money, put it in our pocket, we're like, oh yeah, yeah, put money in our pocket. And uh, 
I'll never forget after that. Like that was the first time that happened. And uh, my first thing was like, what am I gonna do with a hundred dollars? I'm 13 years old. What am I gonna do with a hundred dollars? I'm like, I know I'll go to Fordham Road and get a gold chain. Like that was my mind. And my cousin got some sneakers. And then uh, and also we stole like some because we were fucking poor as shit. So we like saw nice sweaters. Stole a little. Like, not gonna miss this fucking sweater. You know what I mean? Take the sweater. And then eventually, uh, I guess he saw me wearing the sweater one day. <laughs> Yeah, I, I wasn't the brightest criminal. I lived in the place I stole from and wore the things that I stole. So my mom, like, he comes one day, and, like, and uh, he's telling my mom, like, hey, your son's got my sweater on. And that's how that hard my mom was, like, just by my side. I'm like, nah, this isn't his sweater. I bought this on Fordham Road at Jimmy Jazz. Like, I just made up this fucking bold-faced lie. And that was, like, he couldn't prove it. So... That was the second time I got caught, I guess you could say, but it didn't. I didn't get caught. And you could think you would think that might have changed. No, cause then it went from petty petty theft, burglary, the next step, what's the next step? Robbery. You know what I mean? Strong on fucking robbery. And this is like fast forward maybe a few more years. I'm fifteen now. Fifteen years old. From thirteen to fifteen. Hanging out with kids in the hood, it's like, you know, you're just hanging out, with, nobody has shit, you know, so we're all just figuring, like, well, how are we going to fucking make some money? Like, we, you know, what are you going to do, you know? So we're like, fuck it, let's rob people, you know? And it got so low, that like, the, 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 the robbery that sticks out the most in my mind was the uh, once I, I robbed, uh, I robbed a friend. Well, not a friend. It was like a, it was a friend. It was a third-party friend. It was a friend of a friend. And the thing was, the friend was like, because the way it happened was the the friend wanted to buy a gun, right? So he came to me and my friends, and we're like, yeah, 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 we'll get you a gun. We'll get you what kind of gun you want. We didn't know where to get a fucking gun. We had guns, but we weren't selling the guns. We had a gun. I was like, all right. So he's like. Yeah, I got about $400. Me and my friends were like, $400? Oh, shit. All right, yeah, we know where to get a gun from. <laughs> so it was like three, four, it's about four of us. You know, two of my buddies, me and the dude is looking for the gun. So uh, we get like not even far from the third party. The original friend of this guy, we're probably like two blocks from the original friend's house. So we're walking down the block. And then we pull out our gun. And it's just like, give me your fucking money. So then we take this guy's money. And now, like, what's he going to do? He doesn't have a fucking gun. He can't shoot back. He can't do anything. So anyway, we go back to the block now. And uh, the friend, the original friend, the mutual friend is like, yo, dude, you robbed my fucking friend. You know what I mean? Like, it's, it's not even right away, too, because we went to go buy weed and do dumb shit. And then we came back to the block all high. We got food and shit. And my friend's like, he's like, yo, dude, you robbed my friend. Like, how, like, what the fuck is your problem? Like, why would you do that? Like, that's, stupid. like, I would never have, like, if you had someone come to the block, a friend, I would never rob them without cutting you in. You know what I mean? I was like, you're right. That was very inconsiderate of me. I should have at least broke you off a little something. Because that's where I'm coming from. You know what I mean? So, so then it went from petty theft to, uh, it went from petty theft burglary, uh, strong arm robbery, and now what's left? I graduated. I made it. White collar crime. <laughs> now I'm stealing through the fucking computers. I'm stealing over the phone. I don't even, this is, the, I remember when I got the job, the person that gave me the job, they said, yo, you want to make some money? I said, what I got to do? They said, you don't got to shoot nobody. I said, oh, man, all I got to do is sign a fucking piece of paper, press enter, and do some shit like that. So I'm in. And this is like, Maybe my late teens. This is about 19 years old. And um, so I got into this. I won't say exactly what it was, but we'll just say white collar crime. And uh, I, I stole a lot of money. Um, and I think looking back, I just never had a, I never really, I never believed in, in anything people told me. Like growing up, you know, like people tell you, oh, stay in school, you gotta. I'll never forget my dad. I don't really know him that well, but he, he always used to say, oh, if you graduate high school, don't worry, uh, I'll get you any car you want. And I would be like, hell yeah, you're on the fucking bus. How are you gonna get me any car I want? You know what I mean? So I always knew it was a fluke. Like my mom would be like, hey man, you know, you believe 
do whatever you want to do. You can be what you want to be, and you go where you want to go. And I look around, and I'm like, well, why the fuck are you a single mom with four people in a one-bedroom apartment? You know what I mean? Oh, you're an individual. You're going to be fine. Make sure you're an individual. Well, we live in the projects. All the buildings look the same. You know what I mean? How individual is that? So those were the things, I think, that led me to do what I did. And um, even, in, like, I dropped out of school in ninth grade. Like, that was the last year I went to school. Because I had an older sister. She went away to college. She was, like, my mom's prize, the family's prize possession, while everybody else was just, like, you know, you were left, you, you were the leftovers. Like she said earlier, we were the fucking leftovers. You know what I mean? So... I never, I never really felt bad because I looked at it and I went, well, all the people that went away to school that I've ever met, or like even my sister, they're fucking struggling. And guess what? At the end of the day, when they come home, or when they're done with their degree, they're back here with everybody else struggling. So I'm like, why am I going to do that? I might as well just do crime, you know? But the sad part is, like, fast forward to today's day when reality really hits you. So you think you're taking this shortcut, you know, I'm like, I'm laughing at my sister. I'm like, oh, she owes Sally Mae like $100,000 or $80,000. And I'm like, hey, I'm not gonna do that shit. But fast forward to today. Um, fast forward to today and I am on probation and I owe half a million dollars to the government. So I thought I was taking this, sh this super shortcut. <laughs> But at the end of the day, I owe like probably five Harvard degrees to the government, <laughs> thinking I was taking the easy way out, you know what I mean? And um, that was, I think it's just the story is a story of full circle, where you think you, you, you're coming up, but you're not. You know what I mean? You're really just fucking, now you but the, the crazy part is now I'm happier than ever with nothing. <laughs> like even just now, like I got, like, I don't even have enough money to buy a drink, to be honest with you. But, like, I feel fucking great. You know what I mean? And it's, it's, it's cool to me now because I realize what money is. It doesn't really mean anything. What really means anything is the relationships you have with people yes. and how you treat people. Yes. You know what I mean? Because that the things you get back in return and how you feel from that, you can't put a dollar on. So uh, I just feel fortunate that I'm alive and uh, not in jail. Or dead, you know, and, and and I just try to live my life happily, I guess, and help people. So, thank you. You guys have been great. Good story. Really well.